Hey everybody, welcome. I'm super excited today to be talking about some of the latest features we have inside of our annotated components. For those that are unaware, we have the ability to annotate documents directly inside of Salesforce, including images as well as PDFs. We have a lot of different tools when it comes to annotating these elements. They're all documented inside of our documentation portal, but this is going to give us a better look into what it looks like to actually use those in different use cases. So I'm going to switch tabs over here and we're going to jump into a service workflow. And this service workflow should seem pretty familiar for everybody. Uh, that's going to be starting with a case object. So most often uh, case objects are going to be used in workflows like uh, web to case or email to case workflows. And oftentimes uh, when those, those end up getting set up or an email gets sent in to create a case, uh, oftentimes users are going to submit an image and that will automatically get attached to the case. So what we see oftentimes is uh, customers are looking for ways to be able to interact directly with those image in, images whether it's annotating them, cropping them, improving the quality, uh, blurring out sensitive information. So we created Annotate It to be able to utilize all of those as part of our visual workflows. The 2D and 3D components that we also have have the ability to take snapshots and we needed to edit them. But this became way too useful to kind of isolate to those use cases. So we wanted to make sure that they were available to uh, customers out there that wanted to be able to go through uh, different kind of workflows and annotate uh, and edit images based off of those, those workflows and PDFs as well. So taking a look at this case, uh, we already added the component to the screen. You can see here under annotate it, we've got a component here on the screen that, that's been added. And this actually works with any kind of component type. So we're going to be taking a look at a, a couple different use cases directly on Salesforce files as well as on the case. Uh, but just know that it can be put onto any component screen. And all we're really doing behind the scenes is taking a look at the files that are associated to a given record. Uh, this could be a custom record, Salesforce case, or really anything out there within the Salesforce universe. From there, we're going to be showing the list of those attachments and then giving the customer or user the ability to annotate or edit those directly in line. So this is a default component. Um, what we've done is put in a file upload component here, and we have the ability to upload files, as we see here. And as part of that file upload, we now have the ability to annotate directly or edit the image directly inside of Salesforce. So let's take a look at, and I'll move myself here, let's take a look at uh, just the different kind of elements that we have on the screen and what, what the capabilities are. And then we could show a couple of cool different features that we've got uh, actually included into this to make your lives a lot easier when it comes to interacting with elements inside of Salesforce. So first of all, um, we've got kind of a standard editor that uh, should look familiar to those that have edited images on the web or edited images as part of a custom application. Uh, with that, we have our, our controls on the left. Our controls give us the ability to uh, do things like cropping the image, filter, uh, fine tune, and we'll go through each one of these sequentially. But just note that if none of these are, or some of these are not really work, working for the workflow that you're looking for, they all can be turned off individually based off of the Lightning App Builder. Uh, screen behind the scenes. So these are native components inside of Salesforce. And some of the abilities that we have are based on, some of the abilities we give to the users that utilize this are based off of the, those workflows inside of Salesforce where you can actually edit the components on, uh, as, as they sit on the page. So we have all of these available. Uh, they don't all have to be used. So going through the anatomy of this, this component, uh, simple things as far as like orientation, trimming, making it smaller, like for instance, cropping. Uh, by default, we're, we're making the selection of crop. And if we wanted to crop this image as easily as dragging the, the handles to isolate what we're looking to do, uh, we, can, we can crop this out. And then from there, if we want to do something like flip the image or turn it, uh, we can do that as well. Uh, we also can reorient as well. So if we need to rotate the image at all, all that's built in here. And that's on, under the crop setting. So uh, basically, if you want to resize or adjust the image in any way, that, the crop is going to be there for us. Now, filtering, uh, this is going to be pretty similar if you ever use a smartphone or a social media app. Filters provide a different uh, filter over the image that you're looking at. And this is super useful if we want to start doing things like uh, really showing some, some different contrasts, especially if highlighting lines or making something more visible. We can change the filter on the image and adjust it accordingly right here inside of Salesforce instead of having to output it to your phone and try and do, do the image editing or anything like that. All this can happen natively inside of Salesforce. Now, if we wanted to adjust this, um, let's, let's say we, we made a selection, we want to do adjust it or, or step back. We have the history button here that we can take a step back and revert the changes. And that will automatically change everything back to where, where we wanted to begin with. And then as we get into other elements like annotations or stickers, uh, that will work step by step. So if we make an arrow, if we make it a, a line, we can back those out individually. But that button is there for you to be able to go back and uh, revert your changes. 
Now, taking a look, um, if we wanted to fine tune the image even further, meaning like if one of the filters wasn't exactly what we were looking for, we have the ability to fine tune the image based off of the individual elements in an image. So thinking about brightness, contrast, saturation, uh, overexposure, underexposure, changing how bright an image is with the gamma, all of these are available to us. And changing these elements are as simple as making the selection on, on what you want to change about the image and then adjusting this dial accordingly. So if we want to turn the brightness up in a dark image, we can turn the gamma up. Uh, and all of these are just standard terminology when it comes to editing images. So adding things like clarity uh, should be pretty similar to how it looks like when you're editing images on your iPhone or on your Android phone. Now, imitations. This is our most popular feature and functionality. And there are a few things that we're going to uh, take a look at inside of here. Namely, when we first start off with the annotation component, um, we envision our users drawing directly on the images. And that's going to be really important for us to be able to call out board pieces. So, for instance, if I want to zoom in on this and then actually make a call out to the individual piece on it, um, I can do that by selecting the Sharpie. We can adjust the line color to any color we want, how wide the line needs to be. But from here, it's just a free draw. So when we think about what this is going to look like, we can draw things like arrows. We can highlight circle. Uh, really, if you want, you could sign, sign, really do anything you want. But the cool part is, if we make an error on any of these annotations, for instance, this this is not the right highlight, we simply select it and you'll see the highlighting there. And then from there, uh, we can delete it just like that, just like that, and just like that. So now we have the ability to kind of step forward and backward in progress, either by deleting elements or uh, by drawing them directly into here on the image. In addition, if we want to erase elements, meaning like we, we like this, but we want to uh, draw right through it, uh, we can erase elements on, on top of uh, other elements, which is super important when we start adding a lot of shapes in. Uh, we want to be able to erase certain elements. We can do that with the eraser and strike through elements and, and take that out. This is only going to apply to elements that have been added to the image on top of it, so the layers on top of that. Path is uh, something similar to Sharpie, where we have the ability to add multiple points around something. So if you don't want a smooth line drawing and you want to be able to click elements to be able to uh, make a selection or, or highlight information that's important, path is what you're going to be looking for. Similar, uh, but a little bit different line is an unconnected path. So when we make a drawing and selection like that, uh, we can create lines all over our document. Um, if we want to call something out, arrows are super important. We can change the arrow size as well. Rectangles, uh, just like you'd think it would be, we could draw rectangles, ellipses, uh, rounded circles there. And then most importantly for us, I, I, would, I would say, are the text elements. And we'll, we'll take a look at this and uh, in, in why this is most important here in a second. But uh, adding in text, as you can see, gives us a text box right on top of the image. If we want to adjust the font size to something a little bit larger, more legible, we can do so. And then adjust the text box accordingly. So something like this. Uh, so let's actually readjust this to where the image is a little bit smaller and it fits into our image. So as you can see, I added in some text and it says the top broke off during the install. So this is, this is just a, a little bit of text that we've added to the image and that's a real good way to get some information regardless of what record it's going to be used on mo moving forward. This image is now going to contain that uh, information and we'll show a little bit of secret of uh, what we can do behind the scenes uh, about, about the text that's been added here. But as you can see, it's pretty diverse where we can add in different elements, uh, highlight elements, remove, delete, make selections, delete from there. Uh, basically just draw and annotate all over the different images that you want within that annotated feature. Stickers are cool, they are important, and uh, they give us the ability to add in shapes. So when we think about reusable shapes, we've got things like uh, thumbs up, so we approve this. We want to draw attention to something, so we could put a pointer there. Um, smiley face, different arrows, point of interest, locations, informationals, all these are available to us directly on the uh, sticker component. And then also, if uh, you actually need the ability to layer elements on top of or other images on top of this image, we actually can do that through a custom sticker here by making uh, making a selection on select image. And then once that image is selected, you'll you'll see that loaded directly onto the other image on top of this. Now, frames, uh, something real cool. We have the ability to add in different frames around the photo. So if you want to make it look like a Polaroid, uh, add it in set or add in uh, zebra lines, this is available to you. Uh, like everything else, we have the ability to change the different options around it. So if we want to add in uh, radius to make it uh, not look as uh, boxy, we can do that by uh, click clicking in there. The inset uh, can be adjusted as well. Excellent. And that's, that's really what it comes down to when it comes to borders. Now, for this uh, 
annotations component, we also have the ability to redact sensitive information. And what we mean by that is, let's, let's go ahead and zoom in here. Um, if we've got the ability to add in additional information, we also need the ability to hide important information. So if we have customer information inside of a Salesforce org that doesn't need to be shared or broadcast among uh, a lot of different individuals, we have the ability to uh, redact that information. And redacting is actually going to give us the ability to uh, highlight a section of the uh, element. And as you can see, we're pixelating that. So by default, we can pixelate any kind of uh, shape or rectangle inside of the image. We can rotate that um, redaction. And when we get off, get off the redaction, as you can see, uh, when we save this, we're actually going to flatten that image down. So no one's going to be able to access that sensitive information as part of the uh, underlying image. It's going to be covered up officially. And then moving forward, anything that's sent back and forth to or from the customer or updated with this record, that redaction is going to remain. So that sensitive information won't be uh, utilized. And then last but certainly not least, uh, adjusting or resizing an image. Now, oftentimes you'll see smaller images or uh, images that you want to resize inside of Salesforce. This is extremely common whenever we're talking about digital experiences or uh, some people know them as communities. Basically, uh, inventory photos or product photos sometimes can sm come in smaller or very large. And what we might want to do is adjust, or, uh, adjust the image accordingly. For that, we have the ability to uh, change both dimensions or uh, a single dimension at a given time. To adjust both dimensions at a given time, you click the lock feature, and then we can adjust this accordingly. So if we wanted to make it bigger, let's say, we can put it in 2000, and you can see the, the height automatically adjusts. And then from there, our image gets much, much larger. So we have the ability to change and edit images, both in size, shape, and then adding elements to it. And that gives us the ability to interact with the image a, a lot easier and change things that we want to change. Now, when we want to save this, all we have to do is click Done. And then from there, we're updating the file version inside of Salesforce. We are updated. We can see a success message. So we know, we know that that worked for us. Um, now, more importantly, really what happened now, right? We, we want to understand what, what's going on inside of Salesforce behind the scenes. Did this overwrite the image? What happened? And for that, we, we can uh, talk about content documents and, and files a little bit. Inside of Salesforce, there's actually a file versioning system. So every time a new version of a file is updated, uh, that is the latest version that's shown. But there are still copies of those images that are stored behind the scenes if you want to revert go back. So let's say, for instance, we don't like this big goofy pointer or we want to adjust and remove some of these elements. We can actually revert to a prior version that didn't have that and then make new changes. Or if we're still editing the image, we could simply uh, make a selection and then uh, re remove those elements. So this is kind of a highlight uh, overview of the, the Salesforce annotated components. One other, one other thing that we want to take a look at uh, as a little bonus for you. Um, if we take a look at the text that was added here, it says top broke off during installation. Um, really quick, what I wanted to take a look at is on this case now, uh, we, want to, we want to be able to look at the feed object. And now you can and see that a feed preview object, photo we want to and the refresh. annotation text that we added to the image right here in the chatter feed. All right, now let's take a look at our second use case. Uh, this is actually going to be on a different record type altogether. So we switched from case over to a product record. Again, we'll, we can work on any product record. And for this, what we want to take a look at is both our PDF editor as well as our annotations. So by default, we do, don't have any components added to any of your screens or layouts. That's for admin to do. Uh, add these components directly in using the Lightning App Builder. There are documentation sections on how to do that if you're unclear. But uh, in general, it's just like adding any other Lightning component. You can click and edit page and then drag and drop the components on there. As you can see under related, we've added a couple different components. Uh, this top one uh, right here is actually uh, the annotated component, which is for the images that are on the record. As you can see, we have the ability to uh, edit an image that is already here, or we can create a, what we call a whiteboard, which would just be a blank image that you could start writing text on. So if you're interested in uh, patent, uh, drawing and annotating on different elements, uh, without a base image there, we can start from scratch by uh, adding the component like this. Um, and from there, we can annotate the images that are related to this given object. What we actually want to take a look at now, though, is a uh, PDF editing. And that's going to be this component that we have right here. So for the PDF editor, um, because it's put on the product record itself and not on the content document or a files page, uh, we're going to give you the ability to select the file that's related to this record. And when we click on file here, you can see we've got our file uh, piece that we want to be able to take a look at. If you're editing a file uh, outside of Salesforce, we can type in our URL and we can download that for you and then you can annotate it inside of Salesforce. Uh, alternatively, if you want to choose one of the files inside of Salesforce that's related to this record, you can see this uh, PDF is available for us here. We can make a selection on that. 
And then from there, we're, we're going to go ahead and load that PDF in from Salesforce and then display it and give you similar editing options for uh, the underlying PDF. Now, depending on how big the PDF size is and uh, where, where you're connecting to Salesforce wise, depend, it, it really depends on the, the load time there. But uh, as you can see, it's relatively fast when it comes to uh, editing images or editing uh, the PDFs. So this looks similar to our image annotation component, save for a few things, and we'll go ahead and highlight those. First of all, we've got our uh, file, PDF document name up top, so we always know what we're going to be editing here. And on the menu bar here, we also have a download button. So if you want to download the PDF directly, this is especially useful if you are editing a uh, remote file from some other server. We can we can push download. Um, if you want to save it and upload a new new version or save as, we have the ability to push save here. Inside of this uh, component, we have two different views. The first one should look pretty familiar to everybody that's ever looked at a PDF online. Um, basically, every single page that we have inside the PDF is listed here. When we want to edit a different document page, you can make a selection, and then we're going to go ahead and load that PDF page in and have the ability to change and modify it as we see fit. So similar controls that we saw with the image annotation or annotated component, we can do things like cropping, annotating, and redacting sensitive information inside of the PDF. All of these are available to you, and they look very similar, uh, almost identical to the the PDF or the the annotated image editor. Uh, save save for a few things that are, are missing, just in the work of context, it didn't make real sense for us to include. But uh, starting from the top, cropping image or cropping the page. If you want to remove portions of the page, we can adjust it accordingly uh, by either dragging the handles out or in. We also can rotate the, rotate the underlying page of the PDF as well. We can flip the page. Uh, we can rotate it as well. Uh, all, all these are available to us based off of the crop option. From there, annotate it is very similar to our annotated option for the uh, image annotations. We have the ability to draw using a Sharpie. We can erase elements uh, directly on there. We can draw paths, lines, uh, arrows to call things out. We also can add in rectangles, uh, ellipses, uh, circles, or even text. So if we want to call something out, we can add in some text, and then we can type something else in here, and that text would be there and present. When we make when we make edits and changes, we, we want to be able to save that, and for that, we'll go ahead and scroll up and push the Save button, and that'll go ahead and create a new version of that PDF and save it inside of Salesforce. Uh, so you're editing right here in line with the Salesforce file as, it re as it's related to this product record. The next time we load up the product record, we can go ahead and see the annotated version. Um, and this is extremely useful whenever we, we talk about creating quotes and quote, quote objects for uh, CPQ workflows uh, or editing normal PDFs as part of a data workflow and import uh, piece. Um, redactions, pretty simple. Uh, if we have sensitive information within the PDF page itself, we can add a redaction. Um, when we save that, that's actually going to embed that redaction directly onto this page. So you won't be able to uh, kind of go around or circumnavigate the, the um, redaction. It's actually going to embed it itself on that page so where you won't be able to access the data that's behind it. So it's great for security. Resizing this page, uh, very similar to what we saw with the resizing of images. We can resize one dimension, uh, both dimensions, and we can lock out that aspect ratio by pushing the uh, lock there if we want to make changes. And then last but not least, Fine tune. Uh, this is really, really important whenever we think about something that's scanned. So a PDF that got scanned in oftentimes has uh, artifacts on it or sometimes can be hard to read. So adjusting that contrast or adjusting the brightness to a document is super important and necessary for us to be able to change things and be able to see things uh, a little bit more clearly. And this is really important for us with the manufacturers that we work with, uh, just because a lot of times those drawings are line drawings and, and they can get a little bit fuzzy or oversaturated or overexposed. So it's important to be able to edit and, and modify those as, uh, right here in line. Uh, if we want to step back, we have another um, step back reversion button here to where if we make a selection or we add something that we don't like, we can take a step back and that will remove the last step. From there, um, any, any adjustments that we want to take, uh, we can make in, inside of this. So adding in text, adding, adding in Sharpies, annotations, all of this is available for us. And then from there, um, if we want to delete it, we have the ability to make a selection and then push the trash can to delete it. Once we're ready, uh, we're, we're good with these changes. We could push save. You'll see we'll, we'll go through the process of loading that new version of, of this, the PDF document inside of Salesforce. And then the next time that we pull up uh, the component or the, the files that are inside of Salesforce, um, something something similar to this. When we look at the files, uh, next version that we just uploaded will be the one that we see inside of the Salesforce files um, object. So 
basically we work natively directly inside of Salesforce. There's no additional work that you have to do as far as downloading the PDF or uploading the PDF. Again, you don't have to download images and re-upload them. It works directly inside of Salesforce. And as you see, all the annotations that we made inside of this document are available and displayed as our pages load. We, we have the ability to see all those different documents and, and elements inside of them. So this is great uh, for related records, related files. And here are our changes, by the way, we just looked at. This is uh, awesome for uh, editing images that are, or editing PDFs that are related to a record. Uh, one thing that we want to talk about also is how, how this is work, works directly inside of Salesforce with Salesforce files. And for that, I'm going to jump over to this tab real quick. Now on this tab, this look, should look familiar to anybody that's used Salesforce files in the past that wants to be able to um, take a look or view the, view the files directly inside of Salesforce. Um, this is just the standard preview for the Salesforce file object. With that Salesforce file object, um, we have a preview tab, which is the default tab that Salesforce has created, uh, the details tab. So just taking a look at the record, but we also added the annotated component. And by default, if you just drag the annotated component onto this content document page, it just works. Um, any image or uh, image of any type, PDF, SVG, JPEG, or, or otherwise, uh, can automatically get loaded in here. And we'll, we'll take a look at this real quick. We make a selection, automatically opens up that image, and then we have the ability to annotate it. So if we want to do something like, uh, let, let's say there's some sensitive proprietary information in this, we want to redact our control unit here. We can simply add that on there, push done. And now it's uploading a new version inside of Salesforce. So you can see it currently uh, there's a single version. The next time we come to this page, uh, this is again, we'll see, we'll see the uh, newest version that was uploaded and, and changed. And that's available for us to be able to uh, take a look at either download or, or otherwise. One last use case that we want to cover is the usage with Salesforce Lightning Flows. Now, Salesforce Lightning Flows for the admins that are out there uh, should be pretty experienced with the Salesforce Lightning Flows at this point. But if not, it's a great way to create workflows that have screens in them. And a majority of our components work directly inside of Lightning Flow, uh, spe specifically our uh, interactive canvases, both 2D and 3D, and then all of our annotation components, our CAD conversion components, and, and others. But inside of this flow, um, you can see we're just grabbing the content documents. Or we're, we're fetching the, the records that are aligned with that. If the record's a PDF, we're passing it over to the PDF screen. If it's an annotation or an image, we're passing it over to the annotation screen. And what that looks like in here is actually just the annotated component has been added to this flow. So when we're going through a workflow, we make a selection uh, based off of the content documents that are existing in the org. We can do some pre-processing with this, the records inside of Salesforce. But the important part is we're passing those records over inside of Salesforce. Uh, within the lightning flow and then getting those records and record IDs directly to our uh, annotation by putting that record document here in the record ID. Now, from there, there are a few other options in here that we want to take a look at. Um, if we want to show a sh save as dialog, we can do this both on the record page as well as uh, the flow page. And this is going to prompt the user whether or not they want to create a new version of the document and change the name and label of those. Uh, or if you want to use it by, by default, the standard behavior is uh, save, save the image and we'll create a new version for you and update that for you. Now, the related record uh, to save the content document, we're going to pre-populate that save as for you with a given record. So if you want to associate it with another record type, we could do that. Uh, the, the default record ID is what we're pulling in to look at this and that, to look at the image or where, where we're going to be pulling the image in. And then a few other options here, as mentioned, um, we have a few other things in here, but every one of our utilities like annotate, crop, filter, all of those can be hidden if you want. And that's going to reduce the menu items and potential confusion for a user based off of that workflow. Uh, and all of those you can pass values inside. The component size is how large we're going to be using or how large we're going to show the editor. And then the next within the lightning flow is actually whenever we push save, we're going to save a new version and then pass that content document or file ID over to the next step of a flow. So if you're working on a use case of workflow that's using a object that's referencing content documents and you wanna update those as well, uh, that's another one we can use this where we can pass that new updated document ID over to you. And then you could go do some post-processing after the image has been edited. Now, in this use case, all of these are actually uh, done inside of a lightning flow that we use inside of a quick action. Uh, and that can be shown here inside of, inside of the um, record that we were just taking a look at this product. Inside of this, you can see the annotated uh, drop down, and this is going to call directly into that flow, give us the ability to select a content document that's related. And then from this, we have the ability to go through our editor 
uh, with all of our different options inside of here. So all of this is based off of a lightning flow work, work, but it's using the same underlying component. So whether you use it on a record page, on the Salesforce file page, or in a lightning flow, all of those are going to be real different diverse use cases for you to be able to utilize directly inside of Salesforce to edit those images and PDFs. A few other things that we want to talk about, um, all of the diff all of these components are mobile friendly, meaning if you want to use Salesforce mobile and uh, a tablet, that's a great use case for this. We have the ability to draw directly on these documents with an Apple pencil or a tablet pen. With that, uh, whenever uh, the user is done adding an image, whether it's Salesforce mobile or uh, field service lightning use case, when they save it, we're automatically going to update the uh, document behind the scenes or create a new one based off of whether they're starting from an image or starting from taking a photo. Once those images have been uploaded or saved, we have, we're actually doing some work behind the scenes to ensure that if your photo is too large, we actually have a different way to get that into Salesforce. So we're not uh, down, or we're not subject to the current limitations of things like Apex and that kind of thing. Uh, so saving larger images is, is totally fine. And then adding those images afterwards is totally fine directly out of Salesforce or even outside of that. 